If you're having a really slow week, try running a sale. Won't nobody love you the way they should. Won't nobody check up on you, make sure you're good. Won't nobody check those body cameras by your neck. Hi everyone, my name is Becky Park. I'm a part-time reseller on a variety of platforms and in today's What Sold video, we're gonna talk about sales on Poshmark, eBay, Mercari, Depop, and Facebook Marketplace. A lot of the sales from Poshmark and eBay were a result of me running a sale because the week started a little slower than I would have liked and so I took matters into my own hands and I was like, let's just make some sales happen and that's exactly what I did. So in today's video, we're gonna be talking about the sales in the week of October 10th through the 16th and I'll just kind of share with you what sold, where I picked it up, how long I held onto the item for, how much profit I made, all the information that you need to know as you go out and source so that you know what items are worth picking up, what items maybe you can leave behind, that sort of thing. So if you like content like this, you like learning what sells for other people, definitely make sure that you subscribe to my channel because I do one of these videos every single week. So on that note, let's start the video. On Monday, which was October 10th, on Poshmark, I sold this vest by the brand Coaco New York. Never heard of it, never seen it before in my life. Probably not a brand that I'll be picking up in the future, but I got it in a wholesale palette from a reseller. So I had $3.92 into it, but it was this black duck down full zip puffer vest in a size medium. I was surprised that it was duck down. That obviously meant that it was, you know, a higher quality. It's a really great um, insulation material to have duck down, but Regardless, it only sold for $26 because like I said, the brand itself is kind of whatever. And so my profit after Poshmark's 20% fees and my $3.92 cost of goods was $16.88. I'm not surprised that a vest, an outerwear piece, especially with duck down, something that's gonna keep you very warm. I'm not surprised that that sold in the fall, in October. I think we're gonna see a lot more outerwear sells. So if you have some waiting to get listed, I would prioritize those items. The next thing to sell on Monday the 10th was over over on Depop, you guys, I had two Depop sales this week. Look at me, I'm like a bona fide Depop seller. It was this Nike ACG brown full zip vest with zipper pockets. So um, in one day I sold two vests, although this one is very different from that first one. This one I believe was in a size extra small and it sold for $30 with free shipping on Depop. It was something that I only had a dollar and two cents into because it was part of a reseller buyout that I purchased from a local reseller who was done with reselling. She didn't want to do it anymore. And so I made a profit of $20.08. You know, I have heard that the ACG line within Nike is really good and it does better than most Nike pieces. My experience with this particular piece, however, is that I had to hold on to it for quite some time. This is one of two Nike ACG pieces that I have listed and sold. The other item also took a long time to sell, but maybe that's because it was a pair of like baby Nike shoes. Um, but I don't know. I, from my personal experience, have not found that this Nike ACG line gets more attention or sells faster than regular Nike or like Nike Golf or something like that. So I don't know. It's not something that I would pay up for in the future. Maybe this just wasn't the right piece by Nike ACG. Let me know in the comments below if you have more expertise or more experience with selling Nike ACG. I just, I don't know what the big deal is. On Tuesday, which was October October 11th, I had a Poshmark, eBay, and Mercari sale. So on Poshmark, I sold this pair of Jenny Kane white canvas slip-on shoes with a leather trim. They were in a European size 39. I believe they were made in Portugal and they were extremely dirty, which is not surprising because I got them at the bins in Seattle. And if you've ever been to a Goodwill outlet, you know that it is a very dirty place. That being said, these were dirty, not even just because of the bins, but because the previous owner really did a number on them. I don't know what they were doing. They were walking through puddles. They were pouring chocolate milk on their shoes. I don't know. Like they were pretty trash. However, I picked them up because it was the bins. I had about $2 into them and because they were Jenny Kane. Jenny Kane is an amazing brand to be on the lookout for. It is insanely expensive retail, but also really holds its resale value well. The brand is really well known for their sweaters, but their shoes can command a really high price in the resale market as well. These being pretty simple and being pretty trashed, like I said, even though I tried to clean them, um, 
me trying to claim them didn't really do that much, but they still sold for $35 on Poshmark. Again, I had $2 into them. So I made a profit of $26. But please write that name down somewhere. Jenny Kane, such a great brand. If you have the privilege of coming across it in your reselling career, I implore you to pick it up because you'll probably make some good money with it. The next item to sell was over on eBay. It was also from the same Goodwill outlet trip and it was this J. Jill black 100% cashmere open front cardigan sweater in a size 2X for women. So J. Jill is a great mall brand that will sell pretty consistently. It is definitely one of my better bread and butter pieces, which just means like it's the kind of thing that you'll find pretty readily at most thrift stores in America. Um, and it's a brand that a lot of people know and trust. They will buy it on reselling platforms, but you're not going to sell each item for a killing. You know, they're going to sell for a modest amount, maybe $15 to $35, depending on what the item is. This I picked up, however, because it was from the bins. Like I said, it weighed nothing because it was 100% cashmere. It was plus size and it would be a great layering piece for the fall. However, you have to be really careful with cashmere and wool because oftentimes they end up at thrift stores because there are a lot of holes in the fabric. So when we found this at the Goodwill outlet, my husband and I inspected it from top to bottom looking for holes and we could not find any while we were at the bins. I brought it home. I photographed it and right away I noticed a huge hole on the back. <laughs> I don't know what was wrong with us when we were inspecting it at the Goodwill outlet. We didn't see anything wrong with it. And then, you know, the second I got it on a hanger, I was like, well, here's the hole that we were looking for. So there was a big hole. It still sold for $30 on eBay and I only had $2 into it. So I made a profit on that cardigan of $23.92. I am not here to tell you to buy all of the things with the holes, but if it's cashmere, you can get away with it a little bit, especially if it's a plus size piece and if it is a really nice neutral piece like this one was. At the very least, I hope that this encourages you to go ahead and list items that you may have in your death pile that are flawed. Flawed items can still make you money, just like this piece proves. The next item to sell was over on Mercari. This one I was kind of excited about because I bought this item simply based on style and I don't typically do that very often just because many times when I have in the past it has backfired on me and I have had to sit on these items or sell them for very little money. But this item was this vintage MCS LTD, which I think stands for limited. Like, I don't know why I don't know that, but it was this floral grandma core blouse and pleated dress. It had shoulder pads. It was in a size 18 and it sold for $32 on Mercari. I was so happy. I bought it at a local Goodwill for $6 and 99 cents. And so I made a profit of $20 and 58 cents. It's just so validating to buy something because you think it's cute. And then to have someone else also think that it's cute and pay you good money for that item. This didn't really Really have like a brand going for it, but it was kind of trendy in that it was that grandma core cottage core style. And I just had a really good feeling about it. So I picked it up and it sold for a really good amount and gave me the kind of profit that I'm looking for, which is $20 or more. And this definitely delivered on all fronts. And not only that, but I didn't even have it listed for that long. So yay. On Wednesday, which was October 12th, I had two eBay sales. The first one was this pair of Allegria floral Mary Jane hook and loop, which is just a fancy way of saying Velcro because you can't say Velcro on eBay, hook and loop clogs in a European size 41. If you've been watching my channel, you know that bigger sizes in women's shoes have been selling so well for me. And so that was definitely one of the factors as to why I picked these up at a Goodwill near where my in-laws live. So these I picked up for $14.99, which was kind of a lot. Allegria is one of those comfort like clog brands, similar to Dansko, similar to Sunita. Um, it's another one of those you know, comps are kind of all over the place. Some people just kind of sell them for too little, but I sold these for $33. And part of the reason for that is because I was cleaning the exterior of them and they had this really sweet floral print to them. But as I was cleaning one spot, the floral print kind of like smeared. It was as if someone had hand painted these flowers onto these clogs. I don't understand how they could so easily smear, but they did. And so I took pictures of that flaw and made sure to note it in the description. And I did set the price a little bit lower than maybe I would have as a result, but you know, they sold. I only made a profit of $12.62 on those because my cost of goods was so high, but that's okay. I had no way of knowing 
when I saw them at the thrift store that they would smear when I went to clean them. So, you know, what can you do? The next thing to sell on eBay was this Banana Republic gray wool blend full zip sweater with like a buckle at the neck. I don't know when that ever comes in handy. I've been seeing it on things here and there and I don't understand it, but it was in a men's size medium. This sold on eBay for my full asking price of $39.99. That was promoted at 3%. I did have about $2 into it because this is something that a friend of mine gave me before he moved um, up north in the suburbs. Um, he just gave me a ton of stuff, stuff that he was no longer wearing, stuff that his wife was no longer wearing. And although he didn't ask me to pay him for any of that stuff, I just went ahead and gave him some money because who doesn't like getting money? So, you know, I gave him some money. It came out to about $2 a piece and I've been selling his stuff off really well. So very thankful for his stuff. Moving on to October 13th, which was a Thursday on Poshmark. I sold this pair of Vans gray low top lace up sneakers in a men's size eight and a half. Those sold for $27. I had $4.99 into them from a local thrift store. And so I made a profit of $14 and 89 cents. I still have not really cracked the code on how to sell Vans and Converse for a lot of money. I don't get it. So <laughs> I keep trying, I keep picking stuff up and I, I guess I just keep picking up the wrong stuff. I don't know. The next thing to sell was over on eBay. It was this Nike Fit Dry, which is kind of like older Nike's version of dry fit. I don't know, but it's, it says fit dry red quarters at pullover. It was a women's top in a size large. That sold for my full asking price on eBay of $24 and 99 cents. I had $2 into it, I believe from a local consignment store. And so I made a profit of $19 and 89 cents. I feel like a lot of Nike kind of gets lost on reselling platforms just because Nike's so saturated. Um, and so if it's something a little bit more basic like this, you do tend to sit on it for a little bit longer just because there's a lot of Nike out there. And that was definitely the case with this item. I had it listed for quite some time, but it did finally sell. So there you go. On Depop, this is my second Depop sale of the week. I sold this Nike white snap button tearaway pair of track pants in a men's size large. They were definitely that 90s style where you just go whoosh <laughs> because there's like the snap buttons on the side. It just kind of tears away. That's why they're called the tearaway pants. These sold on Depop for $45. That was with me paying for shipping. I had $3 into them because they were from a men's thread of rescue box. And I probably could have gotten a lot more for them had they not had so many snags on the exterior. I feel like these kind of track pants with the polyester, um, it's so easy to snag the pants and there were a lot of snags on these. That's why I let them go for as low as I did, but I still made a profit of $25.18. So that was exciting. On Facebook Marketplace, I sold this Chico's black and white pull-on pair of elastic waist pants in a Chico's size two, which is the equivalent of a US size large. Those sold for $25 on Facebook Marketplace. I had just listed those not too long ago. Um, they were something that I picked up at a local consignment store. I had $2.52 into them because that was my average cost of goods for that particular consignment store trip because they were celebrating their birthday, the birthday of that store with a big birthday sale. And that's why my cost of goods was so low. And so I made a profit on those Chico's pants of $19.72. Chico's is not my favorite brand as far as like, I don't think that I've ever seen a Chico's piece that I'm like, ooh, I would love to buy that for myself. It's not really my aesthetic or vibe, but I have come to learn which Chico's pieces can do well online. And a lot of their pants can actually sell for decent money. Okay, so now we are on October 14th, which was a Friday. This is the day that I was like, you know what? I just am not very happy with the sales that I've had thus far, so let me do something about it. So I ran a sale on Poshmark, and by running a sale, I mean that I sent out, I wanna say maybe like 25 or 30% off offers on a ton of listings. I had a sale running on eBay, eBay, probably for like 15 to 20% off. I had a Facebook marketplace sale running, which resulted in zero Facebook marketplace sales over the weekend. But I just did all of the things to see if I could get some stuff moving and it worked. So Friday was a really good sales day as you're about to see, um, starting with this pair of Cole Haan black Glen Chuka lace-up ankle boots in a size nine for men. These sold for $67 with discounted shipping because that's what happens when you send out offers to likers. You do have to include a shipping discount. I had $2 into them because they were from my friend who moved. And so I made a profit on those boots of $49.88. 
Cole Haan shoes sell consistently. However, I consistently sit on them for a good amount of time. These I did not have to sit on for very long, so I was really excited about that. I was excited that they moved for as much as they did and that they sold as quickly as they did. They probably sold within a couple weeks of being listed. I wish all Cole Haan would sell that fast, but again, Cole Haan is pretty saturated on reselling platforms. You wanna make sure that you're picking up pretty recent, you know, trendier pieces um, and not the older stuff, because there's some old Cole Haan out there too that you will sit on for quite some time. The next item to sell was this Lululemon pink workout tank top in a size two. This I sold for $16 dollars with discounted shipping. Um, I had three dollars into it. It was something that I had picked up at a local consignment store. I only made a profit of eight dollars and eight cents. These kind of workout tank tops by brands like Lululemon, by brands like Athleta, they're not really worth picking up because they don't really sell for more than twenty-five dollars. I would say just kind of be weary of you know those workout tanks. The next thing to sell was this pair of Banana Republic Devon black side zip mid-rise pants in a size six. Just a great classic neutral piece for the office. These sold for twenty dollars. I had $2 into them from a thread up bulk mixed rescue box that I got many, many months, almost like a year or two years ago. Um, and so I made a profit of $14 on those pants. If I can help it, I try really hard not to pick up career pants by brands like Loft and Banana Republic because again, they're just so super saturated on reselling platforms and there are people selling them for like $8. So it's really hard to get someone to come along and try to buy mine for you know more than like 15 or 20. Thankfully, I was able to move these for 20, but still, I, you know, I did have to sit on those for quite some time. The next thing to sell was this Zara brown knit balloon sleeve turtleneck sweater in a size medium. That sold for $18 with discount of shipping. You know, that was one of the offers that I sent out. Um, I only had a dollar and two cents into that because it was part of the reseller buyout from a local reseller. And that was my average cost of goods for everything that I bought off of her was a dollar and two cents. And so I made a profit of $11.66. The next item to sell was this Tommy Hilfiger white and gray pullover raglan long sleeve sweater in a men's size large. This was so basic that I really contemplated if I should even list it or not, but I'm glad that I did because it sold for $18. Um, that was with this kind of shipping because that was an offer that I sent due to my sale. I had $2 into it because it came from my friend that I just kind of gave money to for giving me all this old stuff. And I made a profit of $10.68, which, you know, isn't the kind of profit I'm looking for, but it sold really fast. It sold within a few days of being listed. And that's why I'm glad I went ahead and listed it anyway. The next thing to sell was this new with tags GH Base & Co or is it Bass & Co? I don't know. I don't know this brand like that, but it was this preppy striped cable knit cardigan in a size large for women. This sold for $15 with discount of shipping. I had a dollar and two cents into it because it came from that same reseller buyout. So I made a profit of $9.26 on that. The next thing to sell was this Wrangler cowboy cut blue extra long tails pearl snap button up shirt in a men's 16 and a half. This sold for $22 with discount of shipping because that was part of my sale. I had a dollar and two cents into this one as well because it was part of that reseller buyout. And so I made a profit of $14 and 86 cents. I would have never picked this up if I found it at the thrift store. However, one thing that I learned from doing that reseller buyout is that these kind of like Western or cowboy style shirts, they sell pretty well. I shared this reel on my Instagram of new to me men's brands that I had recently found at the thrift store. And I asked the question, you know, in the caption, what are some men's brands that you sell really consistently? And someone said they live, I believe in Texas and they find this kind of stuff all the time. Wrangler, Levi's, all these kind of like Western style shirts, these cowboy shirts. And she said they sell really well for her. And because she has easy access to that stuff, that's the kind of stuff that she picks up. That's her bread and butter and she does really well with it. So now I know if I'm finding it at the bins, if I'm finding it for real cheap, it's worth picking up. The next thing to sell was this pair of Obos, Obos, I'm not really sure how to say this brand name. Um, this is my second time picking up this brand, but the style name of these was Sawtooth 2. They were these tan leather low hiking shoes in a men's size 11 and a half. These sold for $55. I found them at my local Goodwill for $11.99. And because I had a good experience with this brand before, and because comps were pretty good for the style of hiking boot, I went ahead and picked them up and I made a profit of $32.01. Best of all, 
while these were not listed for very long, they were definitely listed for less than a month. And I'm all about that quick flip that results in a profit of $20 or more. That's what makes me really happy. Speaking of the opposite of that, um, it, this wasn't that bad, but this was a pair of OTBT. It's a good brand in that it's pretty expensive retail, but I have found from my experience in trying to resell it that I do have to sit on it for a little bit longer than maybe I want to. And sometimes it doesn't fetch as much as I think that it will. So this particular pair of OTBT shoes was this pair of Lubbock. I believe that was the style name. Metallic leather strappy open toe sandals. They had a wedge in a size 6M. They were also in a smaller size. So, you know, that might have to do with why they sold for not as much as I thought they would, but they sold for $34. They were promoted at 3%. I only had $2 into them because I got them at the Seattle Goodwill outlet. And so I made a profit of $24.84. And this pair of OTBT shoes definitely sold faster than other OTBT shoes I've had in the past. So I'll take it. And I was very happy to move like sandal type shoes in October. I know that if I didn't sell them then I probably would have had to hold on to them all winter long and wait until the spring and summer to sell them. So I was happy about that. The next thing to sell on eBay was this pair of new with tags, Dockers stretch black mystique slacks in a size 14 for women. Those sold for $15. I did not expect them to sell for very much because they're Dockers. And I think they were like really old too. They were part of that wholesale palette that I purchased from a reseller. And so I had $3.92 into them. My profit was $8.39, but I was just happy to actually make some money on those and not lose money. The next thing to sell was this cabby tie front dress with a green Hawaiian print. It was in a size extra large. It was actually a really cool piece. Um, I have definitely cooled down on picking up cabby, but this one I just had a really good feeling about and I'm really happy it picked it up because it sold for $59.99. I only had $2.52 into it because it was part of that birthday sale at that local consignment store. And that was my average cost of goods per item was $2.52. And so I made a profit on that dress of $49.06. Yes, a lot of cabbie is not worth picking up, but some of it is, and it's so easy to check comps on cabbie. All you have to do is look at the care tag and you'll see the style number. You just write cabbie plus the style number on Google and out will come the style name. You can search the style name on whatever reselling platform you like to use for comps and it'll tell you exactly if, you know, it's a piece worth picking up or not because you can check how much people have been paying for that same item recently. And then the last thing to sell on this Friday was over on Ricari. It was this pair of Nike Shocks gray lace-up sneakers in a men's size 10. This is, I think, my second time selling Nike Shocks. Both of them have been in abysmal condition, <laughs> like just in really rough condition. These I picked up at the Goodwill near where my in-laws live and I saw a man like trying them on and really contemplating whether or not he wanted to buy them and I just kind of like stood by his side until he put them down and then I was able to pick them up and put them in my cart. I did, you know, kind of look them over. Now, it's not that they were in like the worst condition. They were like functional, but they were just really dirty. Um, you could tell they had been sitting in someone's garage for forever. There were like cobwebs and a ton of dust all over them. Um, and there were some like nicks and whatnot on the exterior. And so I sold these on Mercari for $48. I had $9.99 into them. So I still made a profit of $31.52. If you find Nike shocks in really good condition, however, they can sell for like over $100. But like, like I said, these had a lot of wear to them. I think they were also missing the insoles, if I'm not mistaken. Um, I did wipe them down the best that I could, but they were still just kind of dirty and just kind of dingy. And um, I was happy to make the profit that I did. I knew I wasn't going to, you know, get $100 for them. And I was happy with what I did end up with. On Saturday, which was October 15th, on eBay, I sold this pair of mother jeans. They were the Charmer Cargo Gray Mid-Rise Jeans in a size 28. They sold for $45. They were promoted at 3% and I actually purchased those on whatnot to resell So I bought them on whatnot for $17 That's how much I had into them once you factor in like the you know cost of the actual jeans plus shipping And so I still made a profit of $20 and 53 cents You know just because jeans are made by mother doesn't mean that they're gonna do amazing these I think were probably a little bit older of a style I don't know that cargo is like necessarily trending right now But I wanted to support this particular reseller on whatnot and it was you know a good brand so I just thought I'd try it and they actually sold 
pretty fast. They sold within maybe a couple months or three months of being listed. So I was okay with that. The next thing to sell was this Antonio Milani red sleeveless belted zip up career dress in a size eight. I do not pick up this kind of stuff, but it came to me in a threat of rescue box. So, you know, what am I going to do? I'm just going to go ahead and list it. Um, it sold though for $31.99. So I was very pleasantly surprised with that. I only had $2 into it and I made a profit of $25.45 on that thing. On Sunday, which was October 16th, on Poshmark, I sold this pair of Echo Brown Leather Keystone Ballerina Flats in a size 9. Those sold for $50. I had $6.67 into them, I believe from a local Goodwill. And so I made a profit of $33.33. I know in previous what sold videos I have complained about Echo. You know, they seem to sell so well for some resellers and I just could not get them to move. But lately, my Echo shoes have been selling a lot better for me. So I feel like maybe I'm just getting better at, you know, picking up the right kind of Echo shoes. And also maybe I'm just getting better at um, listing and pricing them better. So I do think it's a good brand to pick up. It sells very consistently for a lot of resellers. For me, it's still a bit spotty, but we'll keep trying and see what happens. The next thing to sell was this Real Madrid soft Soccer navy blue full zip track jacket in a men's size small. That sold for $15 on Poshmark. I had $2.99 into it. It came to me in a men's thread up rescue box. I made a profit of $9.01. This is like the second or third Real Madrid track jacket that I've sold. Um, they sell pretty well. I don't know. They don't usually sell for that much, but they sell fairly quickly. So there's that. The next thing to sell was this Banana Republic gray striped button up shirt in a size large. If you guys know my feelings about selling dress up shirts, I really despise it, but I've been forcing myself to get the dress up shirts that I have listed and they have been selling. So thank God for that. This sold for $20. I had $2 into it. It came from my friend who moved, you know, up North. And so I made a profit of $16 and that shirt sold pretty quickly. So thank you, friend. The next thing to sell was this anthropology angel of the North white lace Ways scallop sweater in a size extra small. I don't know. I guess that's what it's called. This sold for $30. I had $3.92 into it because it was part of that wholesale box from that reseller. And so I made a profit of $20.08. I definitely am much more careful about the anthropology that I pick up lately too, because I have been finding that it's been sitting for a really long time. This sweater did sit for at least maybe like half a year, I want to say. So I don't know. I mean, I'm glad that it finally sold and it sold for a decent amount and I made a good profit on it. But, uh, you know, like I said, anthropology has been sitting longer and longer lately. And then the last sale that we'll talk about is another pair of Cole Haan shoes that sold on eBay. These were women's shoes, however. They were these beige leather kitten heel slip on shoes with a ribbon in a size 6B. Um, there was kind of a stain on the ribbon of one of the shoes. These sold for $30 and I did not pick these up. My mom actually gave them to me when I was in Seattle this past summer. Um, she gave them to me to resell because she wasn't wearing them. And so I made a profit of $25.77. This is an example of a pair of shoes that I would avoid if you're at the thrift store just because it's a very old style, but I was pleasantly surprised by how quickly they sold and for how much. So before we talk about my numbers, let me just thank you once again for watching this video. And if you are enjoying it so far, if you feel like you've learned anything, I would super duper appreciate it if you wouldn't mind hitting that like button. But let's talk about my numbers as far as how much I sold per platform and how much I made total for the week. So on Poshmark, I sold 15 items for a gross sales amount of $434. However, we know we have to subtract the amount of Poshmark fees and any shipping discounts that I offered to get a better understanding of how much I actually made. And so once you factor in those numbers, that total drops to $333.16. For those 15 items, I paid $50.52 to acquire them. And so I made a profit, a net profit of $282.64. On eBay, I sold 10 items for a gross sales amount of $343.96. However, if you factor in eBay's fees and any shipping discrepancies, that total drops to 
cents. My cost of goods for those 10 items was $48.43. And so my net profit, the amount that made its way into my bank account from eBay was $240.83. On Mercari, I sold two things for a gross sales amount of $80. If you factor in Mercari's fees, I actually have the buyer pay for shipping, so I don't have to cover any of that. That total drops to $69.08. I had $16.98 into those two items as my cost of goods. And so my net profit on Mercari was $52.10. On Depop, I sold two items for a gross sales amount of $75. Once you factor in Depop's fees, plus the fact that I paid for shipping for both of those items, that total drops to $49.28. I only had $4.02 into those two items. And so I made a net profit of $45.26. Right now we're in like the third week, fourth week, third week, third week of November. I am killing it on Depop this week. So I'm glad that I was patient with that platform and kept listing, even though all I really got were crickets for the first few months that I was on there, but it's definitely picking up and I am here for it. Finally, on Facebook Marketplace, I had one sale for a gross sales amount of $25. Once you factor in Facebook Marketplace's very low fees, that total drops to $22.24. I had $2.52 into that one item, and so I made a net profit of $19.72. In total for the week, I sold 30 items, which is a great number for me as far as number of sold items goes for the week. That's really great, but I think the biggest reason for that high number is because I sent out a ton of offers on Poshmark, ran a sale on eBay. Those are the kinds of things that you have to do sometimes to boost your numbers, and I'll do it every once in a while because it's a good way to move out a lot of inventory at once. But my gross sales amount for the week was $957.96. Once you factor in all the fees and shipping, that total drops to $763.02. My cost of goods for those 30 items was $122.47. And so my net profit for the week was $640.55. Hopefully, as we are in the thick of fourth quarter, these numbers only continue to climb. And on my end, all I can do is continue listing and just doing the things that I need to as a reseller. Let me know down in the comments how it's been going for you if you've been making a ton of sales, if you've been selling a lot of like fall and wintry items, I'd love to know. If you want to watch more What Sold videos because you're getting a lot of value out of this kind of content, then I will link this playlist of every What Sold video I have ever made since the beginning of my reselling YouTube channel. And again, if you don't mind hitting the like button on your way out, I would so super duper appreciate it. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye!